Welcome back to Harbor. We're quickly approaching the president's deadline for a compromise on the debt ceiling. And I want you to meet the man who's been dubbed the unofficial enforcer of the No New Taxes Pledge, which may be holding up that deal. I think it is. In fact, Jeremy now is Grover Norquist, who's president of Americans for Tax Reform. Grover, thanks for coming on. I think we ought to, just to get the people informed in our audience about your pledge, and we're going to read it right now. We have it right now. I pledge to the taxpayers of whatever district or state to the American people that I will, one, oppose any or on any or all efforts to increase the marginal income tax rates for individuals or businesses and or businesses and to oppose any net reduction or elimination of deductions or credits unless matched dollar for dollar by further reductions in tax rates. Now, how successful have you been in nailing down Republicans in the Congress to this pledge? Sure. We've been offering this pledge to candidates for the House and Senate and President for the last 24 years years. Uh, today, uh, 235 members of the House have signed the pledge that are sitting in the, in the House of Representatives, 41 uh, senators. So a majority of House members uh, and 41 senators, 1,200 state legislators, 13 governors. Well, this is the first time it's really had sort of uh, the drama, as you know, and you're probably happy about this. A lot of people aren't happy. Mm -hmm. So explain why you are willing to hold people to this tax pledge, even if it means at least between now and early August, no deal and therefore a possible default. Why are you pushing so hard at this point on keeping people to their pledge? Well, because the, the pledge, again, has been around for 24 years. In 1990, uh, George Herbert Walker Bush signed the pledge, which is why he got won the Republican Yeah, but primary. why are you holding them to it now, at this point, when you were facing this critical situation where many people believe we face a default sometime early in August or sooner, perhaps, and therefore, because there's been no deal in raising the debt ceiling? Why are you holding members of Congress who have pledged to your organization to risk a default? Why are you doing okay. it? Chris. As you know, because you just read the pledge, the pledge is not to my organization. You just read the fact that sure. the pledge is to the American people. But you wrote it. So, yes, and we offer it to all candidates. What the right. pledge does is allows a candidate who wants to run for office to make a credible commitment to the American people that he or she won't raise taxes. Right. Without the pledge, which is the same wording and all 50 states over the last sure. quarter century, uh, a promise not to raise taxes is like any other political promise and means nothing. So the strength of the pledge is not that I or ATR enforces it, it's that the voters enforce it because they know what it means, they've read it, they've seen it, right. they voted for somebody because he or she promised to vote for it. The power of the pledge is the power of the American people, not me personally or Americans for tax reform, uh, but rather that the pledge is not something you can walk away with and say you were misquoted. Right, you're, you're defining this in a way I understand it completely. You've dramatized mm -hmm. but I'm getting back to this. You have asked people to make an ironclad pledge in your organization. You've written a thing, you've promoted it, you've gotten people to sign it. Sure. Those who haven't signed it, you've encouraged to sign it in various ways. you put pressure on it in various ways to grassroots efforts. I assume all that. My question sure. to you is, you hold these people in this organization to this pledge. Your organization holds them to the pledge, not just the American people generally. You, Grover Norquist, and your organization hold them, right? We to the pledge. Urge people, you we personally hold them to the pledge. Them. We urge them to keep the pledge. Right, but that's what I'm saying. If people who break the pledge, as George Herbert Walker Bush did, okay, you uh, keep were going defeated back. by the American people. I know, that's people. the American people. Let me ask you about this situation we're in right now. Right. You are telling people to keep their pledge, right? Let's be honest. You're telling them. Yes, you of course. Over, okay. yeah. You're telling I them to keep their pledge in the, face of a financial, in the face of a financial default. Okay. You're willing to take the heat and say, I urge these people to stick to a pledge which I know will prevent a deal which allows the debt that's going to go up. That's just a definition. You agree with that? What I just said? No, because I don't think the president of the United States is such a left-wing ideologue that he would close down the government because he's having a hissy fit that he can't get a tax increase. Uh, what a hissy he fit? Is that away. how we talk now? A hissy fit? What's that? Okay, that he's What's a hissy insisting, fit. What's um, a hissy fit? When he says he wants to raise taxes and he'd rather close the government, you just said the president would rather close down the government. No, I'm than saying have a to get a deal cut. between the Democrats and the Republicans, everyone watching this show knows you need some kind of deal, a four to right. one, whatever, cutting spending and raising uh, revenues. Some kind of deal. You're saying no deal is what you're saying. No deal. No, a, a deal which re reduces spending and doesn't raise taxes. The that's Republicans right, but that's, are that's the only deal one. you accept. In other words, nothing that would be agreeable to any of the Democrats. 
Well, you're suggesting that the Democrats would rather close down the government if they don't get a tax increase. I no, think the Democrats than will agree to some kind of compromise, even if it's four to one, because the president is putting pressure on them. You're saying that even a four to one deal is not good enough for you. Well, the American people have elected a Congress committed not to raising taxes, and they're not going to raise taxes. But there is, Therefore, of course, there's a compromise well, you, you know, to I've be made. I've asked you for about five minutes, Grover. You're a very smart guy and very politically aware. Will you right. answer the question? Are you happy with this situation that's developed now? That because pledge that you've arranged people to sign and encouraged them to sign, and are watchdogging. This pledge will keep a deal from happening between the Republicans and the Democrats, which will allow the debt ceiling to go up and avoid default. You're happy with this crisis we're in right okay. now. I disagree with your, your well, assumption. Well, tell and me, tell your me assertion. how I'm wrong. Tell me how okay. I'm wrong. The, I am glad that taxes will not be raised. I under any circumstances. That, under any circumstances, of course. Any circumstances. The because the It's better not to raise up. taxes. It's better to have a default than to raise taxes. You it's said any circumstances. It's better to bring spending down than to either have a default. They're or going to bring spending to down. Taxes. Both sides have agreed. The President of the United States is full force for at least a three trillion dollar cut as part of a four trillion dollar package. You say, I don't want the package. I'd rather have default is what your position is. Just tell me if it isn't. I would rather have the, the American people uh, move forward without a tax increase and without and have a default. And no, without a default, let's bring spending down. How do you down. avoid a default if you don't if you if you refuse to raise taxes? The and, and the is, Democrats and Republicans can't make talk? a deal. No, you've been talking quite well. And the Democrats and Republicans don't reach a deal. You're happy with that resolution because it proves your point that people will fight taxes yeah. more than they'll fight a default. I want an agreement that, that brings down spending. That's what we're fighting for. And no the tax president increase. says he would rather he would rather close down the government. You're no, asserting he would rather, the president no. of the United States would He's rather put close out a proposal. down the government Let's if get he doesn't facts. get his tax increase. The president says he wants a $4 trillion package, including perhaps $3 trillion in spending cuts, and you say no deal, right? It would be more impressive if he'd write down the spending cuts. He still hasn't put together a budget. Because, the, that he because can show you us. people are refusing to deal on principle. You have just said five but, or six times now no tax increase under any circumstance. That was your phrase. Isn't that what you just taxes, said? Any, under any taxes. circumstance. Of course his taxes are not going to be raised. The problem we have is too much spending. Raising okay. taxes is solved the problem of too much spending. Why would you cut raise taxes? Well, let me give you some numbers. What percentage of GDP right now is coming into revenue? 16. What's going out? 24. So you've got to reconcile the two. 16 is not enough in revenues, and 24 is too much in spending if you're only going to raise 16. Yeah. Your own balanced budget proposal among the Republicans is about 18. So at minimum, you've got to raise 2% of revenues, and you guys at GDP, and you don't want to give anything to this guy, even to get back up from 16 to 18, which is where you say you want to end up with your balanced budget amendment. Can't you even meet the terms of your own balanced budget amendment? Chris, that, is that unreasonable? As, as you hmm? know, the reason why tax revenues are closer to 16 percent than the norm 18 percent right. is because so many people are out of work. The reason yes. so many people are out of work is that this administration has spent an awful lot of money and wasted <sighs> okay. it on stimulus spending. Okay. You've got all the arguments has been except the taxes. logic here. Anybody listening right now knows the arithmetic, Grover, which is our revenues are too low for the amount of money we've committed because in government spending. Because of unemployment, spending. Chris. Yes, because of course. Because of unemployment. Even and under your balanced budget amendment, you your that. balanced budget amendment makes no allowance for unemployment. It just raises, it sets a uh, Hard a ceiling, core. a ceiling, it Chris, uh, a yes, ceiling of 18%, not a floor. Of course not. But the fact is you're not providing here for bringing up revenues in any instance. Your position basically is right now, Chris, just to clear this now. So when it gets to July 30th, what's your position going to be on revenues? On July 30th, that well, we we'll should... Do. Grow no revenue wealth. increase. I'm in favor of more federal revenues through more employment. No, but and not more through any act, no by act, not by act of Congress. Not by act of Congress. Okay. Of course August not. 15th, what will your position be on revenues? That by we should grow the economy and we should okay. cut spending. So your position as we go deeper and deeper into what everyone in the world recognizes will be perhaps bankruptcy, uh, basically spikes in the interest rate, a reduction in our, in our bond ratings and everything else, perhaps the bond vigilantes will come in and all that's going to happen in August and you're going to stand fast and say even in the face of that terror, you're going to say I'm holding my people, I've got 41 senators, I've got 235 House members and they better not budge because I grow over Norquist said so. Actually, Chris, the American people said so, not No, me. in your document, you wrote it. 
Yeah, and the American people. The American people didn't write that. The The American people, in every poll I look at, says Republicans are now running 21 percent in approval now because of the stand fast position you've asserted here and prescribed for them. By the way, let's be honest. You diagnosed the problem, high taxes, and you you gave your prescription. No new taxes. And you got 41 guys to go along with it. And by the way, what do you do to the ones that don't go along with you? You just let them go and give them a kiss goodbye. You blow kiss them. No, you go after them and pressure them. Right. We we highlight to the American people who's kept their pledge and who hasn't. Right. Now, how about and people that know, haven't signed the Gallup pledge? Poll. How about One people second. who say this is bad policy? Like people like Lugar and Grassley, real conservatives who don't believe in your approach. What do you do to them? Actually, both of them have staked out a position of opposition to any tax increase. Uh, they have not, but not yet with you. taken the pledge. Well, they haven't signed the pledge, but Luger says he hasn't because he wants to go to a retail sales tax. Uh, and I hope that someday we'll be able to explain okay. to him you can move to a retail so sales ba- tax. So basically, we're in, we're, in a, the pledge. we're in a really, a, 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 looks to me like a real conflict here between you and me on this, because I think we need to deal with this debt ceiling issue. And you say we have to deal with the revenue issue, period. Under any I circumstances. think we need to deal with the spending issue, Chris. The government's okay. spending too much money. They need to spend less. You know what? The president has agreed with you. He will reduce spending by three trillion dollars in exchange for a one trillion dollar increase in revenue, which is a three to one deal, which your party earned by doing a, winning an election. But if you don't deal, nothing gets done. That's how politics works. It may not but be if the, the way. But the problem is spending. Raising taxes doesn't help. Uh, you know what it does? It deals with it lowers the deficit and it begins to show that American government can work without people like you basically dictating to politicians what they have to sign to avoid well, your heat. But Chris, but you're very as you successful. Noticed, it's the you're American very successful people that have said that, not not well, Americans we'll, we'll for see. tax reform. We'll see. Hey Grover, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate you coming on. It's a good argument. I think we've cleared up the way people know where you stand right now. I hope I've helped. We're you're watching hard spending. Well, you know what? That's not the issue. It's the issue you won't cut a That's deal. That's the only issue, overspending okay, okay. by this administration. Grover, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. I mean it. You know I do. Thank you. You're watching Hardball, only on MSNBC.